you don't recognize me, I'm the regional sales director for Tektronix for our video network uh, monitoring solutions. Uh, Michael Brett was uh, hosting us there a minute ago, and Jeremy Brown will be providing a lot of the technical details this morning. He's our uh, senior application engineer, and I'll be handing it off to Jeremy here shortly. Um, Jeremy, you can go to the next slide. I uh, just wanted to share with you. So today we're going to talk about where uh, closed caption and call compliance is uh, today, a little bit about where we've gotten to, um, look at a, an overview of that, and then uh, really the, the, the majority of the presentation today will be about uh, call compliance overview and our Sentry product and how we uh, attack those issues uh, for our customers. And we'll save time at the end for questions and answers. And as uh, Michael highlighted, it's a, it's a chat-based uh, questions, and we'll try to respond to you as many of your questions as we can at the end or get back to you at, at a later date. Uh, next slide, Jeremy. So closed captioning has gained a lot of steam in recent months. Uh, the FCC has heated up their uh, regulatory environment relative to compliance of providing closed captioning. Um, so the new rules apply to everyone uh, that's delivering Visio signals, and uh, there's a drive to ensure that the closed caption is accurate, that it's synchronous with the video that's being presented, and that it is complete and properly placed. Next slide. Uh, the FCC received more than 40,000 complaints over the last uh, couple of years since um, CALM was instituted. Hello? Um, somebody got a mute there. Um, Jeremy needs yes, to mute. Yeah, they recently approved a technical change in CALM in terms of the way that actual dial norm is measured um, that has been recently implemented. Uh, and we'll discuss that in more detail shortly. Uh, current stakeholders have uh, another uh, 10 months to comply with that, and they are determined to be in compliance if they have installed, utilized, and maintained uh, the requisite equipment and software to, to, to effectively monitor their dial norm levels. Um, and so large cable co operators are required at this point to conduct a, an annual check to ensure that their programs are in compliance. And so the ways we go about measuring that, where we measure it, and how we measure it, I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy Brown to share that with you this morning. Go ahead, Jeremy. All right. Can you guys hear me okay, uh, Tony and Terry? Yes. Okay. <laughs> good. All right. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. And let me just go to that next slide. So we're going to cover just a few things real quickly of how Sentry um, looks at some of the stuff like closed captioning and calm compliance. So in compliance monitoring, some of the things, what do you want to look for? Well, some of the obvious things are you want to take a look at, um, at your closed captioning, you want to take a look at your audio levels, and you want to take a look at your descriptive video. So in the closed captioning area, we want to be able to monitor that, hey, is it there? If it's there, is it okay or is it aired? Um, also, the closed captioning occupancy-based alerting. So if it's there uh, in the U.S., you're required to have at least 75% of the time. Um, you want to make sure that closed captioning is actually there, present in that stream for at least that percentage of time, as well as it's okay and not in an aired state. Uh, on the closed captioning side, we do tests. So there we test the syntax, the parity, and the sequencing to make sure that when that set-top box gets it, that it's okay and that it can actually be displayed properly on the screen. On the descriptive video, we go in and we take a look at the primary and the secondary audio, but we're looking for that secondary audio. And depending on what the operator has set, for their descriptor for that secondary auto to denote descriptive video. I've seen Spanish, I've seen Chinese, I've seen Portuguese, uh, and actually I've seen where it does say descriptive video. Uh, it just depends on what the operator has set or has the ability to set uh, for that descriptor in that audio encoder so that we know what's going on. 
Uh, and then you also want to be able to report on that. So to the right are some, some of the, the ways which we'll get into here when I go into uh, the actual demo to, to show you how we find this type of information. So on the closed captioning side, uh, these are the specific errors that we're looking for when we're going in and looking at that closed captioning. So we're not just looking to see, hey, is there uh, closed captioning being flagged? Is it being carried in the, in the MPEG? Uh, we actually want to dig down and check to make sure that these specific checks are done to make sure that it is properly uh, formatted so that it can be displayed up on the screen. Uh, so here are the checks for the 608, the 708, and the STT20 that we're doing. Um, and when we do see an error, we'll flag it that there is an error and what one of these reasons it was that we flagged it for being an error. So that way you get a good report of, okay, now I see that there is closed captioning. Uh, I see that there's closed captioning there, but it's an error, and this is the error that's causing this. Uh, so you can go back and try and troubleshoot that and get that fixed. On the COM compliance, uh, COM's been around, as Tony mentioned, for quite a few years now. Uh, as of June of this year, they actually changed, uh, the FCC finally updated the stuff to use BS 1770-3. Um, and that, that became official, so now you've got a, a year to be in compliance with that. But uh, most of my customers have actually already started using the VS1770-3 for the audio measurement algorithm. Uh, we also offer a 3-second and a 10-second sliding window uh, to help you get that granularity that they're looking for uh, in the reporting. Uh, we also have a thumbnail timeline, which is a new feature. And I'll be showing you that a little bit later. And you can see a screenshot of that in the upper right here. Uh, so post flights and DPI reporting is what you're looking at on the picture on the lower right. And that's for looking at ads that actually you guys are inserting. So it's looking at these SCT35 avails, making sure that the splice out was there, um, that you have a splice in, what the events ID was, all that type of stuff. And then you can also take a look at the audio levels during that time. On the COM thumbnail timeline, this is the, a newer feature that we, we had requested by a lot of our customers. Uh, they wanted to be able to see what was going on. So in this particular case, we've got a thumbnail that we store every 20 seconds. So we're taking an iframe every 20 seconds on normal. Uh, if we see something that goes above dial norm or below dial norm, then we'll increase that rate. And in this case, if it goes below negative 5.4, so it gets really soft, we're going to start recording every two seconds an iframe. Uh, if it goes above, then we're going to start recording every one second. So there is a, a program group that you create in order to do this, and you can have 10 programs in there um, looking at the audio and recording this 24 hours a day. Uh, it stores that information for two to three days. So if you need to, you can actually do a column compliance check. If you get a complaint in, you can go ahead, start looking at that, add that program in, and find out what's going on. Uh, also, if the uh, the program has multiple audio channels, such as Dolby 5.1, uh, we all those channels are taken into account. And then if we also see a an issue where dial norm or the average audio level is out of basically out of compliance for over 120 seconds. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll just start dropping that down to a five second period instead of every second. So it gives you a good, good way to go in and try and find errors or, or find specific commercials. Uh, the reason behind this particular feature was that a lot of the time there were complaints on commercials, but they were either national commercials or something that was embedded from the provider that the uh, MSO had no control over. So they wanted to be able to go in and find when those commercials took place. and if they were responsible for them or if it was somebody that was upstream from them was. So where do we want to monitor for the closed captioning audio loudness? For us, we've got a variety of different centuries uh, that can fit in different points within the network. Um, most of the customers that we have out there, they take a look at everything that's coming into them. So they want to see that if a provider is sending them something, they want to make sure it's okay. Uh, then they take a look at it if they do any uh, re-encoding or muxing, and also post-splice. The post-splice is important, especially on the comm side, because that's where you're, you're required to do your monitoring. 
with Sentry, you can sit there post splice. You can take a look at those SD35 tags on the ad queue report. Make sure everything's coming through okay. Make sure it's the right commercials that are playing out. Make sure all of your audio levels are okay. On the closed captioning site, of course, you can look at it in all three locations, just as you can with the audio. But uh, you can take a look and make sure that that closed captioning stayed intact throughout the entire sequence here. And then that will all report back up to the device called the Medius, which is an aggregation point for all of that data. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the demo. And what I've got is, I'll minimize this stuff for you. This is a Medius. And what's going on with this Medius is this is one that we have in our lab. We've got some streams on it that we're looping through to be able to demonstrate kind of what it does and where it goes. So I've got some kind of bookmarked pages here to run you through how I go about looking for certain things. So we're going to start off with closed captioning. So what I've done is actually if I come into Medius and I go to alerts, and then summary, it's going to show me the alerts that I've got set up. So I've set some alerts up here for closed captioning. So if these conditions are met, if closed captioning is present in an error for greater than one second over a 60 minute period, hey, I want to know about it. Uh, you can, this is completely customizable. You can say one second, two second, over a two second period, a day period, completely up to you of how you want to set that up. I also have it set that if closed captioning is present for less than 50% over a 15 minute period, then I want to go ahead and get that logged as well. So we've got a bunch of these different alerts here that are set. So a lot of the times what I do, which is very helpful, if I want to try and locate programming that has it, I will come in and I will run an alert count report. So you can get to that, again, under the alerts, and this time it's alert analysis. We're going to come in, take a look. I've run this just for the last hour. Uh, you can go to any point in time within the last 60 days. So that's a, another thing is Sentry will store all this information for 60 days. All the statistical information, all the alerts stored for 60 days. So you have the ability to go to any point in time in that 60 days and pull this information. I can also save this report and schedule it so that you can get an automatic report sent to you every day, uh, once a week, once an hour, whatever you want. You've got the, the ability to pick. So in this case, I found that, hey, look at that. I've got uh, a bunch of the Nickelodeons are sending me alerts. So I've got down here links to each one of those programs. If I click on that link, it's actually going to take me to this report here. And this report is the program detail report. This is going to show you everything that we know about uh, in this case, Nick Das. If I click on CC, which is located here for MPEG-2 video, which is where the closed captioning is carried, it'll actually take me to a closed captioning report. So I'll click on that now. And I can see a report here that shows me when closed captioning was there. So in this case, we've got orange blocks. The data was present, but in error for some time. If I mouse over these, it's going to tell me the time frame that, that that block represents, how long that it was present, and how many seconds it was in air. So in this case, it looks like we have uh, 608 parity error and caption service layer error. Um, so it's a good indication of, of what's going on. So now we can go back, check out that encoder, make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do, and contact the vendor if we need to. So it's a good way to find uh, what's been happening. There's another way that I can run a report if I just want to get one you know, once a day, once a week. And that report is actually under reports, and it's called program statistics. So I went ahead and I ran that report, and I picked a couple of things here, uh, audio loudness and closed captioning. So I want to find out, hey, was closed captioning available on all these different programs for this particular duration of time. So I just have an hour. Again, I can go back for a day, a week, anything like that. In this case, I can see that I've had valid closed captioning for 99.91% of the time. So that's that's great. You're, you're hitting there. You're, you're passing what you're supposed to have. But this is a, a very good way to come in and very quickly tell, am I meeting that specification the FCC set out? Do I have closed captioning on my programming for the majority of the time that I need to have it? 
Um, also, you have the ability in this to limit this range. So within that uh, FCC mandate, they've got it where you've got a, a couple hour window in the very early morning hours um, that you don't have to count. So if you wanted to, you could actually come in and exclude that time frame if you need to. Um, so in this case, we can see that, hey, we've got closed captioning here all the time, but some of these do have errors. So in that case, you'd want to go back in, you'd want to take a look and see what's going on so you can get those errors cleared up. Okay, let's go back over to our audio loudness. So a couple of different ways that I go in and I take a look at audio loudness problems. Uh, one of the first, actually, is starting off with this report here. With this report here, one of the main things that gives me is distance from dial norm. Uh, I've got a lot of customers that run this uh, weekly, and then they report back to their providers. So distance from dial norm is what the average measured audio is versus what dial norm is set to. So I can see, you know, this guy's a little bit out, not too bad. This guy's right in there. Um, but I've got some of them that are 11 dB off. That's way, way too much. So in this way, I can go through and I can take a look at my providers and see who's, who's sending the actual uh, audio that is correct. And these are some pretty old streams. So we've got some pretty um, large amounts of errors here as far as the distance from dial norm. This is before everyone kind of started to crack down on it. Uh, I also have what dial norm is set to in those streams. So I can come through and see, hey, if I want everybody to be set at negative 24 and these guys are all set at negative 31, you should probably let them know so that they can fix that. So this is a, a good starting point to find possible problematic programs that uh, could cause problems. You may have a, a program that is actually too quiet, and then you go ahead and you insert an ad that, that's properly formatted, that's, that's at the correct audio level, but because your surrounding program is so quiet, it does, it's not actually meeting what the dial norm is set to, uh, your commercial will sound really loud. And then, then you know, you've got people that complaining, even though technically it was right on the mark because of that surrounding programming, uh, it didn't work so well. So in that case, like this guy right here, uh, it's minus 6.25. If all of a sudden you came in with a commercial that was right, right at dial norm, right at negative 24, it's going to blow that poor guy out of the water. So one of the next places I can take a look is, I mentioned before, we take a look at AdQ PIDs. So I've got a, a program group. I'm just looking at a couple programs here. And I can come in and take a look at Animal Planet TLC in this case. And I can see all these splices that are taking place. If I want some more detailed information, I can actually click on here. And it's going to take me to a little bit more detailed report. So now, as I mouse over, you can see these are the same three thumbnails, but it's because this is a looping feed is why you see that. But every time I mouse over, uh, you see the thumbnails change and then also the highlighted portion down below change. And that's showing me which splice event uh, correlates to those specific thumbnails. So I can see down here, I've got an out. Um, I've got eight seconds of pre-roll, and we're calculating that based on when we actually see what this event time is, when it's supposed to splice, versus what time we physically saw that come by on the wire. Uh, that way you've got plenty of time for pre-roll here. It's eight seconds. You need to have at least four to properly splice. So this is a good way to make sure that you are getting your messaging. It is coming out right, and it is coming out on time. Uh, so it, it does kind of a dual thing here. Make sure that your um, splicing information is okay. And then up here, for each one of these, I can see what's going on audio-wise each time these commercials are spliced. And if I want, I can zoom in. I can draw a box like this, and look at that. Now I've got a more um, accurate, I guess I should say, well, not really accurate, but a, a, a finer time, time frame so that I can see a little bit more detail of exactly what's going on. So now I can see exactly what the audio level was during these commercials when they played out. And I also have the event information here as well. So this is a good way to check post splice for calm compliance and what's really happening when you do your splice. So in the case of ones that don't have um, Q-tones, these are actually embedded commercials, I can come up and I can do another report. So what I did is I went into 
a program detail report here for CNN. Um, this is going to be pretty much everything we know about CNN. Uh, with this thumbnail timeline feature, since this is part of our Cal Calm Act thumbnails group, it's going to include something extra within the audio graph down here. So now I've got a little line above the top that I can come through and I can mouse over and I can see those thumbnails. So I can see, okay, here's what's going on, something about the lottery. Oh, here's a commercial. Okay, so if I hold my mouse to that commercial, that larger thumbnail comes up so I can see exactly what it is. So now I can find out, and if I scroll up a little bit, I don't see on the Add Q-Tone hid any splice messages coming through right here. So I know this was an embedded ad, and I can go in and take a look. Okay, here we've got an embedded ad. Let's zoom in a little bit, just like we did on the other report. And when I do that, the amount of thumbnails increases. So that one there was one about every minute or so that you were seeing. But it, now that we've zoomed into a, a finer timeline, now I see even more. So as you do this, you actually can get in. So now I can see, look at all these different thumbnails here for that ad, where before I only had the one, now I've got quite a few. So I can see exactly what's going on with this ad when it transitioned here. And I can see the audio levels down here of what's happening and what's going on. So you can really zoom in tight and make sure, hey, was it this specific ad or was it the ad next to it that was having an issue? And again, this report here, which is the main one that I, I like to run, is I go out and I, I actually have this set up and saved so that it can go out and send that to me um, once a week, just so if I do a, an update. I, when you first start out, a lot of times you go ahead and you'll run it every day just to kind of get a handle on things. And then pretty soon after you've got things going the way they need to, I set it up, run it once a week. Uh, it automatically emails to me and it email, emails it to me as a CSV so that I can put it into Excel. I can make uh, pivot tables, charts, graphs, whatever I want with that, um, which is very good information. All right. Tony, do you have anything you'd want to add? Terry or Mike, do you have anything that you want to add? There was a, a few questions that came in. Um, there was a question about, do we handle AFD fields and bar data? Um, we do recognize the AFD. I don't know as far as we do, we don't do any reporting on it as of right now. Any other questions that we have out there? Anything that anyone may want to see? Jeremy, there was a question about uh, what hours of the day is uh, the FCC concerned about? Uh, from what I remember, and this is going off of looking at this a long time ago, I believe it was between uh, 2 and 4 in the morning uh, from what I can remember. I'm not 100% yeah. on that, but I'm pretty sure it, that it's about when you'd normally have a maintenance window or when you have the paid commercials and things like that. Another question as well for um, some of the Century current users that are on this call, which there are many, is uh, on the thumbnail timeline and some of these other uh, advanced closed captioning features, what uh, software rev on their Century uh, do they need to have for those features? Okay, it's uh, going to be version 9.1 or greater uh, will will carry that feature. And then there there is some, there are are a few things that um, go along with that. Um, it's going to be version 9.1, but uh, we need to make sure that your your Sentry is at least an i7 uh, processor, and that it meets some some RAM and uh, disk space requirements as well. That's primarily for the thumbnail capture, not the closed captioning stuff, right? Correct, correct. Right. So um, 
and uh, we can talk to anybody about that. If any of the Sentry users that are out there, if you go to the About page of your Sentry, it will tell you what software rev you're currently running. And um, you know, all people with a, a you know current support renewal will get any of these features as they are released. I think we have some another release expected in the coming weeks as well. Correct? Yep, we sure do. Okay. All right, well, good. I don't know if any other questions have come in, um, but we certainly, uh, you can follow up. Jeremy, if you can go back to the slide deck for a second. Uh, there was a question asked about if this webinar will be recorded and available to be later, and the answer is yes. Uh, we wanted to let everybody know. Uh, we just wanted to take, uh, you know, cover the highlights today and keep it uh, brief and informative. Uh, but we will be exhibiting at uh, uh, Expo next week in Denver. For any people that happen to be attending that event, please stop by our booth. Um, the Century uh, does an excellent job at looking at closed captioning and uh, the call uh, compliance issues at scale. So we can look at a, a gigabit worth of video with uh, a single uh, device. Um, so it's excellent for uh, as a compliance tool in that regard. It also is calibrated nicely with all of the tech analyzers that provide similar metrics on a single program. And tech has done a lot in, in conjunction both pro both product lines, the video network monitoring and the analyzers, to ensure that what we detect at scale, they can tear apart at a single program stream. And so if you have time and you're at the expo, um, please stop by and we'll show you some of those capabilities. Um, if you have any other further questions about anything that we've shared on this webinar today or how to acquire some of these fine products, uh, please contact Bob Frazier. Uh, he's in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, and he's available, uh, and he'll route you to the right person depending on your question and your requirement. Uh, if there is any technical support or anybody has any questions about how to configure their Sentry or would like somebody to walk through some of these things that we've discussed today or anything relative to those products, uh, the te technical support email uh, number is there. We're certainly available uh, 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 faster than that if you want to call us. Uh, and then for any additional information about this product or our other products, was somebody going to say something right there? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, for information about this product or many of our other products, we do have a, a Tektronix channel up on YouTube. You just go in the search box and scroll through there. Tech has, is a, we have lots of different products that are out there, but if you scroll through, there's some specific uh, uh, videos relative to the Sentry and, and those products as well. But thanks everybody for joining us. If anybody else uh, within on the panel has anything to share before we uh, terminate the call, go ahead. Jeremy, thank you very much for your presentation, and Michael Brett for setting things up, and all of the 150 plus people that joined us this morning. All right, everybody, thanks a lot. Have a great week and weekend. Hope to see you next week in Denver. Thanks, guys.